Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, I'm going to show you five ways to make your bass lines much punchier. These techniques are simple, but super effective, and I use them in a lot of my tracks. I start with more obvious ones, but by the end of the video, there's going to be some that are probably a lot lesser known. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get more videos like this one, and give the video a thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously. So I've just laid out a very basic kick and bass pattern. but I want that bass to be more present. I want it to be punchier. So the first thing I'm going to add is a saturator. I'm gonna drag it up before the EQ so I can show you what's actually going on. So I'm only using this sine wave, but then I'm using uh, this filter frequency to really control the pluck of the sound. So it's more of a, a punchy sound already. Next, what I'm going to do is just increase the saturator until we start to get more harmonic content. So what saturator is doing is adding frequencies on top of our original sound. And because a sine wave is only one frequency, by adding the saturation, we're going to hear more harmonic content. It's going to be fuller, it's going to be warmer, and it's going to feel a little bit more present and punchy. So I'm going to increase this and you're going to start to see more and more harmonics coming in. We have to be careful though, because as we're increasing the drive of the saturator, it's going to sound louder, but it's also going to be pushing out more signal. So I'm going to reduce the output right away by 10 dB before I start to increase this. If I go much higher, you can see all the harmonic content coming in. I'm going to dial it back so it's more tasteful. Now that we're hitting all the way at 20 dB, we are getting a little bit of crunchiness. It's not really desirable, so I can just EQ that out, and we're still going to get that low harmonic content without so much of the high, buzzy, electric y sounding content. So before and after EQ. So we're getting that harmonic content, we're getting the octaves and the harmonies, and it is feeling more present and punchy. I'm gonna dial it back to only 10 dB, and I'm going to change this into a sawtooth wave. By changing it into the sawtooth wave, we are already getting a lot more harmonic content than the saturator is going to provide. And I'm going to turn the EQ off for now. I'm going to turn this into more of a pluck, so I'm going to increase this filter one amount. So it's already punchier, but we're going to add something extra to make it even more punchy, and that is layering the bass lines. So within Wavetable, we have two oscillators. So we have the first one, and let's go ahead and grab a second one. I'm going to transpose that by bringing it down one full octave, and then I'm going to move this up to a sawtooth as well. I'm going to also lower the volume because this is going to be just a bit of volume that I want to introduce. And let's take a listen before and after adding that second octave. Maybe turn it down just a little bit more. You can tell it's adding way more weight to the sound, way more body, and it is a little bit more punchy. We could also try putting it up a full octave. And playing with the volume until we find a nice spot. And then once more, we can add the saturator. Number three is going to be layering, not just a baseline, but a percussive element over that baseline. This is really, really popular with toms and percussive hits and claves, things that are going to bring out more content of that baseline without adding a lot of volume, things that are more unique and different sounding than using synthesis. So let's go ahead and grab a tom here. So let's just search tom. Tom 89. I like this one. It's very strong hitting. 
percussive. I'm going to drag and drop that into here. And I'm going to just follow the same path as the MIDI information. So that the sample is a little long. I don't want the bass frequencies because I have the bass frequencies in Wavetable. So I'm going to just filter, uh, cut out almost all the sound here. And then I'm going to EQ out all the bass. Duplicate that over. And I want to EQ out all that low end. So I'm going to solve this. Hear how percussive that is and how punchy and strong that is. It's very, very aggressive. I'm going to layer that with the wavetable now and let's take a listen. Obviously a little bit too loud. I'm going to dial that in in volume. And maybe add some extra EQ. And before and after. And of course you can EQ more to taste, so you're only really getting that punch. Or if you want a bit more content, you can add more high end to the sound. This leads me to number four, which is going to be pretty obvious, but compression. And I want to compress both these sounds together, and then I want to compress them individually. I want to compress both these sounds together because they're layered, and then I want to add more compression after that to kind of shape the punchiness of the sound. So I'm going to group these together. Bass, compressor, and throw it on there. So what I'm looking for is I want to have a very fast attack. I want to just really squish down any of those peaking transients and just remove maybe one or two dB so that I can really just grab both those sounds and kind of glue them together. Of course, you have to be careful with putting a really, really fast attack because if you put it too fast or if you take too much, it really destroys the dynamics. But I like to add just a little bit. So I'm going to go down all the way to zero. my way up and then reduce a little bit more okay so reducing about 1 dB maybe I'll go a little bit harder and I'll just leave this at about 1.5 sound a little bit together maybe I'll go a little bit harder okay so now they sound a little bit more together but now I'm going to treat this as one sound and I'm going to add a second compressor so this compressor is going to be more for the shaping of the sound this can be used on individual sounds it can be used on layered sounds it's just going to go with a slower attack we're going to allow those transients to really punch through and then we're going to push the volume just a little bit louder so those higher transients are going to punch and the rest of the sound is going to be just slightly behind it so that it makes it even more punchy I'm looking for about two to three decibels of gain reduction. Again, I don't want to compress too, too much because we're going to really squash the dynamics. And we'll boost this up by 2.5. Push that kick back up in volume a little bit so it's a little bit closer. And we are clipping, so I'm going to turn everything down. And let's listen with both compressors off and then on. With and without the kick. It's 
bringing out that transient just a little bit more and really increasing that punch. The thing is, if you go too punchy, you're going to set yourself up for failure because then the body and the weight of the sound won't be as present as well. And it might just sound a little bit too punchy. So you have to dial in according to taste, but I would suggest maybe not going too punchy so that it doesn't just sound too transient and too snappy. So number five, the final tip is going to be pitch modulation. You can do this in pretty much every synth, but I'm going to show you how to do it inside Wavetable. It's very, very simple. So I'm going to go into envelope two now because we haven't been using that to control anything inside of our matrix. And I'm going to bring this to K time down very, very quick, down to about 30 to 50 milliseconds. Then I'm going to increase the pitch here. So if I go into pitch on my target, envelope two, and I'm going to bring that up to 48. Now, when I play this bass, it's going to very, very quickly jump up in pitch and then drop back down to where it began, but over the course of the amount of time that we put, and if we're putting 30, 40 milliseconds, it's going to be very quick. And it's going to give us a sense of punch. Let's take a listen. And we can increase the time if we'd like. So you know what's really happening, but much faster. So before and after. Smacks much harder this way. Saturator giving it even more and adding in that tom again, giving us even more. Maybe we want to turn that tom down quite a bit and turn the compression off. And with the kick, everybody thanks so much for watching and if you like this video make sure to give me a thumbs up if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can learn more information like this and i will see you guys in the next video